Chapter 6 That night the king had trouble sleeping, so he ordered an attendant to bring the historical records of his kingdom so they could be read to him. In those records he discovered an account of how Mordecai had exposed the plot of Bigthana and Tiresh, two of the eunuchs who guarded the door to the king's private quarters. They had plotted to assassinate the king. What reward or recognition did we ever give Mordecai for this? The king asked. His attendants replied, Nothing has been done. Who is that in the outer court? The king inquired. Now as it happened, Haman had just arrived in the outer court of the palace to ask the king to hang Mordecai from the gallows he had prepared. So the attendants replied to the king, Haman is out there. Bring him in, the king ordered. So Haman came in and the king said, and What should I do to honor a man who truly pleases me? Haman thought to himself, Whom would the king wish to honor more than me? So he replied, If the king wishes to honor someone, he should bring out one of the king's own royal robes, as well as the king's own horse with a royal emblem on its head. Instruct one of the king's most noble princes to dress the man in the king's robe, and to lead him through the city square on the king's own horse. Have the prince shout as they go, This is what happens to those the king wishes to honor! Excellent! The king said to Haman, Hurry and get the robe and my horse, and do just as you have said for Mordecai the Jew who sits at the gate of the palace. Do not fail to carry out everything you have suggested. So Haman took the robe and put it on Mordecai, placed him on the king's own horse, and led him through the city square, shouting, This is what happens to those the king wishes to honor. Afterward, Mordecai returned to the palace gate, but Haman hurried home, dejected, and completely humiliated. When Haman told his wife Ziresh and all his friends what had happened, they said, Since Mordecai, this man who has humiliated you, is a Jew, you will never succeed in your plans against him. It will be fatal to continue to oppose him. While they were still talking, the king's eunuchs arrived to take Haman to the banquet Esther had prepared. Chapter 7 So the king and Haman went to Queen Esther's banquet. And while they were drinking wine that day, the king again asked her, Tell me what you want, Queen Esther. What is your request? I will give it to you, even if it is half the kingdom. And so Queen Esther replied, If your majesty is pleased with me and wants to grant my request, my petition is that my life and the lives of my people will be spared. For my people and I have been sold to those who would kill, slaughter, and annihilate us. If we had only been sold as slaves, I could remain quiet, for that would have been a matter too trivial to warrant disturbing the king. Who would do such a thing? King Xerxes demanded. Who would dare touch you? Esther replied. This wicked Haman is our enemy. Haman grew pale with fright before the king and queen. Then the king jumped to his feet in a rage and went out into the palace garden. But Haman stayed behind to plead for his life with Queen Esther, for he knew that he was doomed. In despair, he fell on the couch where Queen Esther was reclining, just as the king returned from the palace garden. Will he even assault the queen right here in the palace before my very eyes? The king roared, and as soon as the king spoke, his attendants covered Haman's face, signaling his doom. Then Harbona, one of the king's eunuchs, said, Haman has set up a gallows that stands 75 feet tall in his own courtyard. He intended to use it to hang Mordecai, the man who saved the king from assassination. Then hang Haman on it, the king ordered. So they hanged Haman on the gallows he had set up for Mordecai, and the king's anger was pacified.